educational status, but men's educational status doesn't. So that's also an important multi-generational effect. Um, I, I released a video. I was going to conclude that other story. I released a video or someone released a clip of me talking about some of the things we just talked about. And it went out on YouTube shorts and it's got like 5 million views in a month or something like that. And the comment section is unbelievably vitriolic. It's every single comment is vitriolic. And it's all from women. It's like, who is this old white bastard telling us what we should do with our bodies? You know, and I wasn't being judgmental. I was just saying exactly what I said to you, which is, well, I've watched women over the entire course of my life with, I would say, an affectionate eye. You know, I love my sister. I love my wife. I have a daughter. I love my mother. I'm pretty happy about women, all things considered. I don't have an axe to grind in relationship to how they should conduct their lives. I don't even know how they should conduct their lives. I've watched what happens. And I've also watched what happens to women who hit 29 or 30 and then can't conceive. And that is not a fate I would wish on anyone. It's awful. And 30% of couples fall into that. 30% of couples have difficulty conceiving. It's a lot. And the probability that you'll have difficulty conceiving increases with age. And so, you know, c'est la vie. And, but it, it's very interesting to me to see how vitriolic those comments have been and how, how uniform that is. Because usually, on my YouTube channel in particular, 95% of the comments are positive. And this is completely the opposite of that. So, and then, so you brought this up at the beginning. You said 50% of women now at 30. 50.1, 50. 50. a childless by 30. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, that's, uh, that's not good. That's a sign of something profoundly wrong with the entire culture at an extremely deep level. I don't think that women need to take it as us trying to tell women what they should or shouldn't do. But I think that it would be very fair to say that you need to be an incredibly unique woman to make it to 50 without a family and look back and think, yeah, I did this right. That's not to say that those women aren't out there. They absolutely are. I know some of them. But I think overall that it's... I mean, well, it's the same with everyone, for everyone. I mm -hmm. mean, th this is another example of how our culture has just lost its moorings. It's like, well, what's life? Well, you have a job or a career and hopefully you're productive and you contribute something to the community and you provide yourself and your family with the necessities of life. That's a quarter of your life or a third of it, something like that. You have an intimate relationship and you have a family. That's life. And if you don't have one of those, that's one third of your life you don't have. Now, some people, maybe they're doing so well on the other two fronts that they can cope with not having that. Or maybe they're doing so well on one front, they can cope with not having two of them. Compensates. Yeah, maybe. It's pretty hard because if you want to have a great career, it's hard to do that if you're alone and without a family. Right? I mean, the, the people that I've seen who've been best situated in their life, all things mm. considered, even in relationship to their career, have a pretty solid monogamous relationship that stabilizes them. And then they have a family that also stabilizes them and broadens out their life. And, you know, exceptional people do exceptional things and good for them. But they're, by definition, given that they're exceptional, they're a tiny minority. This is always the argument between conservatives and liberals, right? Because the liberal types, they're more tilted sometimes towards, what would you call it, uh, uh, compassion or appreciation for the exceptional. And fair enough, the exceptional is necessary. But on average, what everyone does on average is the thing to do. And so you just look, you see, well, what do people do? Well, they have a job or a career, they have an intimate relationship, and they have a family. And if you don't have any one of those things, well, then you're treading water harder. Doesn't mean you can't do it. And it doesn't even mean possibly that you shouldn't try, but as a default presumption, it's just utterly foolish. What else are you going to do with your life? Well, maybe you're wildly creative. Fair enough, you know. That's extraordinarily rare as well, subject to the power law problem in any case, which is even if you're hyper-creative, the probability that you're going to be successful at that economically is extremely, extremely tiny to the point where it's almost non-existent. It's so difficult. Now, it does happen, and, some, and you can have spectacular success if you become successful, but... Wasn't it that you, did you say last night, 
Of the 100,000 most recently printed books, only 1,000 have sold more than a million? Yes, yeah, something like that. It's something like Power that. law's all the way down. Yeah, everywhere, everywhere. Power law, that's, you know, a tiny minority of people do all the work, a tiny minority of people get all the benefit. A tiny minority of athletes score all the goals. A tiny minority of men get all the women, etc. A tiny minority of stars have all the mass. A tiny minority of rivers have all the water. A tiny minority of cities have all the people, etc., etc., etc. Everywhere, always. You know, and, and we're so clueless.